What's up everybody, Kono Pro, how you doing all? Hope all is well. So what we have here is a um, closet pull on shelf we're gonna be installing today. So we're measuring from the floor, basically to the bottom of our ledger, and then we're gonna use a level, we're gonna level over. Now you always use a level to double check your uh, measurement because if you just measure from the floor, sometimes the floor can be uneven and not level. So de definitely, definitely always use a level to uh, level over to the other side of the wall. So basically I start from one side, I level over to the other side of the wall, take my two foot level, and we use that to uh, level out my side, my left side. That's gonna be my left side leisure to receive the left side of my closet. Closet shelf and pull. So now what we're doing is we're gonna measure from wall to wall, get our measurement. Once we have our measurement, we'll write it down so we don't forget it. And then we'll double check for our studs. Make sure that we have our studs right. There was an existing shelf there, so I can see where some existing nails were as far as uh, existing stud layout. Double checking my side measurements, making sure everything's gonna be good. Yep, that's gonna be my measurement for my right, my right side. It's gonna receive my uh, right side of my shelf. So now what I'm doing is I'm double checking that the studs are there. Once I verify and locate all the studs, I'll have uh, secure locations to uh, screw down that ledger. I'll be nailing the ledger on, but then I'll go back through with some screws and screw it in a little stronger at the end. But in the meantime, we'll be nailing everything to the two by fours to make it secure and solid. So we're double, check, double checking, double checking our studs, making sure everything is ready to rock. Here we are. That looks good. We found meat. So what I'm using is I'm using a three inch screw, you know, just to basically screw in and find my stud. This is old lath and plaster. So if you use a stud finder on old lath and plaster, it's not going to work. So it's always better just to try to find the stud layout and then screw your screw into it, find wood. And then once you have that, double check all your screws, you know, basically the, all your stud layout is gonna land 16 on center, you verify where they're all at, mark them. So when you put your new ledger up, you basically can uh, scribe your layout onto your new ledger. So that's basically what I'm doing here. So that looks good. I got stud there. So this is our ledger material. Basically it's some, uh, some pine, some one by three pine. And we're going to be cutting it down to size. I call it one by three, but it's actually technically um, one by four, but it comes three and a quarter by three and a half inches. So I just call it one by three, but it's technically one by four um, pine from your local hardware store. So I have my measurements on this piece of cardboard here and I'm making sure I always write down my measurements, double check what my measurements are. Measure twice, cut once. So I'm gonna give a little 45 degree cut on the end of my cut here. That's for my left side piece. And then I'm gonna duplicate that side for my right side piece. Basically just sister it up next to that other piece of wood that already has a 45 left over from the cut I just made. And then cut my square joint. And there we go. Put them together, make sure both of our sides are pretty even. That looks great. Make sure they're flush, trim it up. This is a compound miter chop saw that we're using here. And like I always say in all the videos, guys, use protection. Guys and girls, please, all of you all, use protection. I would hate for uh, you guys to, uh, anything to happen to you guys. So please be safe while you're doing all these projects and use protection. If you feel like this is a project you can't do, please hire a professional. Licensed contractor at that. Because remember, if the job equals more than $500 labor and material combined, you need to hire a licensed contractor. So here's the ledger. I'm setting my, my finished side in that looks the nicest. It's gonna face in towards me. So my rough side that doesn't look that good is gonna face basically out towards the wall. It's gonna to be touching the wall. And my finished side of the pine, the cleaner side is gonna face in. So now I'm nailing it with some uh, two and a half inch Brad nail, 16 gauge with my nail gun. I'm nailing it into all the studs that I uh, pre-drew out on my layout. 
Got my back ledger there, my right side and my left side. This is basically the same way I built the, um, if you look on some of my other videos, I have a pantry shelves, how to build pantry shelves. Basically the ledger is the exact same way I do that ledger. It's all done the same way. Once you start learning how to do stuff like this, it'll all you know, be pretty common sense to you. So I nail into my uh, studs, and then I get a couple nails in the mid span too, just to lock it down to that lath and plaster. It will bite through the lath and plaster, and it will nail to the, um, the old wood lath. Okay. But be, be mindful when you're shooting through areas where there's no two by four behind you, that you're using smaller nails. So the nails don't go through the wood and through the lath and plaster and hit a pipe or any electrical. So now what we're doing is we're measuring for our shelf. And of course, like all these old structures in Los Angeles, California, none of the walls are square with this old lath and plaster. So basically like, let's say the inside will be 54 and a half and then the outside might be 55. So you'll, you'll always measure that back side as your square side. And then you'll measure one side, you will pull from one side. So if you pull from the right back corner, you pull 54 and a half, then you pull the, from the right top front part of your board, your one by 12, and you pull your 55. And then you'd have your tapered line only on one side. Then here we are cutting it. Typically you'd use a skill saw to do this, but we can get down with the chop saw pretty good too. Just be safe and always use safety while doing this. So now if you, if you trim it and you cut it just right, should fit in nice and snug, just like that. Once we put our pine in there, we're gonna start getting ready and measuring for our, um, our pole. It's gonna be a nice closet pole here. We're gonna put a center bracket. We're measuring for our center. So basically we're pulling our center point here. And then we're gonna put a little custom wood support and that custom wood support, what that does is it furs it out to the same reveal as your ledger. So that way you have backing behind your steel bracket. This is a standard closet steel bracket I got from your local hardware store that actually has a, um, uh, you know, uh, an area in it that's gonna receive the pole, the closet pole itself. So what we have here, this is the little support block. I like to give it some detail. So I'm, cut, I'm cutting it at my length, and then I'm gonna cut off the corners, you know, with a 45 degree cut. So if you see here, you can measure, we got basically, you know, you go an inch down, and you can cut your uh, 45 degree off. Double checking my measurements. I usually like to pull center. Center of my one by three. And then I measure over from that three quarters of an inch. And then I measure down an inch. And that's gonna line us up just perfect. So my 45 degree hit, 45 degree cut right there. Perfect. And then now we're gonna hit it with the chop saw, with the 45 degree cut, cut off those corners. Watch your fingers. Always practice safety. Everybody, please. All you girls and boys out there, you guys, please be careful with what you're doing if you're doing this stuff. Okay, so now we have our center mark. We basically have our center mark on our support block too. Verifying that's our center mark. Yes, it is. So let's mark it clearly. And then we're gonna take that mark and we're basically gonna line that up with our center mark on our ledger. And we're gonna nail it on with our um, finished nail gun, which is a finished nail gun. We're shooting two and a half inch, 16 gauge brad nails. So here we are shooting this in. We know our stud is right there to the left of my support. So those nails, I'm gonna toenail them into my support all the way up that side there. So we're hitting a two by four on that side. Then I throw a couple in the top ledger. That gives it extra support. Here's our bracket. I'm going to dry fit our bracket, make sure everything lines up good. I always like to double check my reveal on each side, make sure it's even. 
once we know it's good, I usually give some dry lines, basically some marks there, so that way if it moves while I'm adjusting it, I know where I need to go back to. Checking my level, looking pretty good. Mark my line. Now that's where I want it to stay permanently. So once I have that line there, I can move it around because I have a line to go back to. It makes it a lot easier on you once you do that. So once I have the top secure, let's go ahead and double check, nail down my um, top one by 12. And that also is a piece of pine, one by 12 pine is my shelf material. Make sure that's all secure, everything is nailed down. Now we're gonna be installing our bracket. Good, double checking everything. I like to see how I nailed half of it first and then I double check with my bracket and then I nail the other side. I like to double check everything, make sure everything's gonna work out first before I fully secure it all together. So if there's any changes I need to do last minute to make sure it's right and you know the integrity of my product is sound, then I'll go back through and, and do it right if I have to, but you know, most of the time it all comes out just right. If you measure things out and you have the common sense of doing construction about you, a lot of times it comes out pretty smooth. But if not, then follow some of these steps and hopefully they help you, you know. So here we are, we're lining it back up with the line. I have a countersink that I attach to my, my drill, which is an um, impact drill. That countersink will just give us basically, it's a pilot with the countersink on it. I'm only using the pilot section of it. I like to always give this old pine some, um, you know, some pilot screws before I sink my screws so it doesn't split the wood. So now we're ready to lock in our screws using again an impact drill with um, now I have a Phillips head attachment on it. So we attached with the first one. Now we're going to lock in the top drill, excuse me, top screw with the drill. Once we have that in, we're going to install some screws here on the top. Make sure your screws are no, you know, no bigger than three quarter inches. Five eighths is perfect because if you go bigger than that, they'll go through the top of your, uh, the top of your shelf there. We don't want that. Okay, now everything looks good. We're gonna go ahead and start getting ready to install our, uh, our right and left supports. So here I am countersinking, like I said earlier, for my screws that are actually gonna give some extra support. And I'm locking those three inch screws all the way down into the two by fours. The reason I like to do this, most contractors would just go ahead and call it good without even doing the screws like that. I like to add them for extra support so I can do some push-ups, some pull-ups. Oh yeah, I like to do some pull-ups on the, after I'm done, I like to do a set of two of pull-ups and then I know that my shelf is gonna hold at least 200 pounds of clothes. So what these are, this is basically hardware you get at your local, um, hardware store and this is a closet pole hardware to receive the poles on the sides so basically they have to line up exactly the same they have to line up with that center support okay so now I'm measuring to the center support we got you know about 11 and 3 quarter inches to the center of my line and um, once I know that then great and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some um, support blocks and these little support blocks are basically going to be like that center support that I cut with the 45 degree cut on them. But they're going to basically be just be for the two rights, for the right side and for the left side. And that's going to give me, you'll see, it's going to give me um, nice backing for me to attach my, my uh, hardware to receive my right and left end of the pole, my closet pole. So here we are doing the same, repeating the same pulling my center line and then you could pull in you know one inch on each side and then pull your 45 to that and if you just run your 45 from that line to zero it's going to be exactly what you want so there's my line 45 degree cut I'm cutting through two blocks at a time if you feel comfortable doing that then by all means but make sure you use safety and uh, like I say, if you're not a professional with this, you might want to hire a professional doing some of this work here. Be careful with what you're doing. Make sure you always use safety. Please, guys and girls.
Okay, these are the blocks here. The support blocks are going to hold my pole, my right and left side of the pole. I'll be attaching the hardware to these little blocks. And I give them the 45s. A lot of people don't. I give them the 45s. It gives extra detail, extra craftsmanship. So here we go. See, there's my, my right side ledger. And I just measure center of my block. I put it up to that line because that's going to be, that's my 11 and 3 quarters center of where my hardware pole is going to go. So that right there is how you do it. Now we're nailing it in to the supports. Everything looks good. That was our right side. Now we got our left side. Line it up with my center line that I pre-marked on the little block. Line it up with my line on my ledger. And that line on my ledger, like I said, is center line of my hardware bracket. So if you measure center of my hardware, that was 11 3 quarters. I measured to there, 11 and 3 quarters to that center line. That's center of where my, my hardware is going to go. This is a block. I'm just using it to make sure everything's flush. And um, I'm not using my hammer so I don't damage the wood. This is finished work here. So now I measure down from butt it to the top of the, to the bottom of the shelf. And then I measure down. And basically that's going to be to the beginning, to the, to the top of my uh, hardware. It's going to go into the side. It's actually to the the bottom of my hardware. I'm going to set it onto that line three inches down. I like to level up my line. It's a little tricky to do this work and it's even more, you know, it's even a little trickier to try to explain how to do it. But if you have an idea of how to do it and you watch this video, then this should just be totally cake for you. It'd be really easy for you to do. So once I have my lines, my center lines, my, my bottom line, then what I do is I put that center screw on the hardware is actually your center line. So I line up that center screw with the bottom. See where my thumb is? That's lined up with that bottom line. And it's sitting right on top of that three inch line that I measured from the top of the board. I always recommend you double check all your measurements and make sure they're all perfect before you commit to screwing all your screws in. Okay, right side is installed. Now we install our left side. See, we double check. That's going to be the bottom of my bracket. And then see that that center screw is how I line up that line to my center line. Install that center screw. Everything looks good. Tap it over a little bit so it's lined up. See, I always like to, like I say, lock in just one screw and then you can make adjustments. Now we go. Now we're good. So we're going to commit to locking in all three of our screws. And there's our left side of the hardware. Now we're going to measure from inside to inside of that hardware, from wood to wood. And that's going to be the size of our pole. And basically it's just um, a, some wooden dowel, some one and a quarter inch wooden dowel bought from my local hardware store. And um, I believe it might be Hemlock. If not, it's it's pine or dug fir, but I believe this is actually hemlock. Hemlock is a pretty stout wood, so it's good for uh, closet poles. So here we are. I cut off one side because it was a raw cut. I wanted to give it a nice fresh cut. I pull from that side my measurements. Now, if the measurement, let's say, is 52 on the inside to inside, you, you cut off in about an eighth. So you have play to put it in with your metal hardware. So then we get her in nice and we get it in nice and tight. We get him in there nice and tight. Okay. And then we're after we get that locked in, we're gonna lock in some of these screws. There's already pre-existing holes in your bracket. So once that's all locked in, we lock in your um, you know, the pole, and everything's good. I hope this video I hope I hope you guys like this video, guys and girls out there, please. I hope you guys all like this video. I enjoy doing it for you. This is just what I do for a living, you know, doing construction and stuff like that. And um you know, I thought I'd just share it with everybody out there so they can gain some knowledge on how stuff is done and uh, basically some experience on the work itself. So if they hire someone else to do the work, they can have an idea of what it takes, you know, to do the work and the process that it takes to do the work. All right, there it is. Closet pole and shelf, Kono Pro. That's how we do it, everybody. Let's get some pull-ups in there and make sure this is uh, gonna pass the weight test. And yes, it does with Flying Killers. 
that's how we do it, Kono Pro. Hope everybody loves the little video I we enjoyed putting together. Please uh, leave us a comment, give us a you know a like and a, and subscribe. We would really like that. Kono Pro appreciates it. Have a good one, everybody. Bye bye.